Hello, welcome to Quick Anatomy Revision. I am Dr. Poonam Kharab Jango. Brachial plexus is one of the most important topics of upper limb. Often a long question is asked on brachial plexus. The structured question asked in exams is describe brachial plexus under the following headings formation, parts, branches, and applied anatomy. What is brachial plexus? Brachial plexus is a network of nerves that innervates all the structures of the upper limb along with most of the muscles in the pectoral, shoulder and scapular region. So where is brachial plexus located? As we can see in this picture, part of the brachial plexus is located in the posterior triangle of the neck and part of it lies in the axilla. Brachial plexus enters axilla from the posterior triangle of the neck through a canal known as cervico axillary canal which is bounded anteriorly by clavicle which has been cut here medially by first rib and posteriorly will be the upper border of scapula. Let us look at the parts of the brachial plexus. Brachial plexus it resembles an inverted tree so therefore its parts are also like the parts of a tree and they are roots which can be seen here. These are the roots to begin with. Then we have trunks, then we have divisions and then the cords are there and their branches. Roots, trunks and divisions of brachial plexus, they are located in the posterior triangle of the neck above the clavicle. That's why they constitute the supraclavicular part of brachial plexus whereas the cords and the branches of the cords they lie below the clavicle within the axilla and they constitute the infraclavicular part of brachial plexus. Let us see how the brachial plexus is formed. Brachial plexus is formed in the posterior triangle of the neck by the union of ventral rami. This is very important to remember ventral rami because all the plexus is in the body whether it is cervical, brachial, lumbar, lumbosacral they are all formed from ventral rami. The whole of the anterior aspect of the trunk as well as whole of the limbs upper and lower limbs they are always supplied by ventral rami. So the brachial plexus is also formed by the union of ventral rami of 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th cervical spinal nerves and the 1st thoracic nerve that is from C5 to C8 cervical nerves and the T1 spinal nerve and we call these ventral rami as roots of the brachial plexus. Sometimes C4 spinal nerve can contribute to the brachial plexus and such a brachial plexus is known as prefixed plexus. On the other hand, if T2 spinal nerve contributes to the brachial plexus, then we call it post-fixed plexus. As mentioned earlier, here we can see there are total 5 roots of brachial plexus and these are the ventral rami of C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 spinal nerves. After roots, the trunk and division part of the brachial plexus comes. In total, there are three trunks, upper, middle and lower. Let us see how they are formed. The ventral rami of C5 and C6 spinal nerves, that is this one, the C5 and the C6 spinal nerve. Remember the ventral rami. They unite together to form the upper trunk. The ventral ramus of C7 spinal nerve continues as middle trunk. The ventral rami of C8 and T1 spinal nerves, they unite to form the lower trunk. Now each of these trunks, they divide into an anterior division and a posterior division. So here also we can see anterior and posterior division and the lower trunk also divides into a posterior division is here and the anterior division. So there are three trunks in total, upper, middle and lower and each has got two divisions, anterior and posterior division. After divisions, we have cords of the brachial plexus. So let us see how the cords are formed. 
we have already seen that all the three trunks they divide into anterior and posterior divisions the anterior divisions are shown in black lines whereas the posterior divisions are shown in yellow line so these divisions they will be responsible for the formation of three cords and these are lateral posterior and medial so lateral cord is formed by joining of anterior division of upper and middle trunk whereas the medial cord is continuation of the anterior division of lower trunk whereas the posterior cord is formed by joining of posterior divisions of all the three trunks now there is another thing to note here when we look at the body in anatomical position then the upper part of the neck is continuous with the lateral side of the upper limb therefore the lateral cord will be contributed by the upper two trunks that is the upper and middle trunks their anterior divisions will join to form lateral cord whereas the lower part of the neck is in line with the medial side of the upper limb so therefore the medial cord is formed by the continuation of the anterior division of lower trunk so we have to remember that both the lateral and the medial cord they are formed only by anterior divisions and it is very simple to understand that posterior cord that is formed by joining of posterior divisions of all the three trunks this picture shows the position of the three cords in the axilla and their relations to the axillary artery so we can see here this is the lateral aspect we can see the humerus here and we can see the ribs here so this is the medial aspect so this is the lateral cord we can see here which is formed from the upper and the middle trunk so this you can see is running on the lateral aspect of the axilla this is the medial cord right which is continuation from anterior division of the lower trunk so this is the medial cord and the posterior cord is hidden because it is behind the axillary artery so this is the posterior cord and the three cords they are related to the axillary artery according to their names that means the lateral cord here is lateral to axillary artery medial cord is medial to axillary artery and the posterior cord is posterior to the axillary artery especially the second part of the axillary artery so what are the branches of brachial plexus in total we have 17 branches for nerves arising from the brachial plexus two arise directly from the roots two from the upper trunk and 13 from the cords so let's see which nerves arise from the roots so there are two nerves which will arise from the roots we can see here these are the roots of the brachial plexus the first nerve which you can see here this is the dorsal scapular nerve so as the name suggests this is going to go to the scapular region so first is dorsal scapular nerve and the root value is c5 another nerve that is long thoracic nerve as the name suggests it is very long is going to run on the thoracic region this is the one which supplies serratus anterior so this long thoracic nerve its root value is c5 c6 and c7 and this also arises directly from the roots so how many nerves arise from the roots two first is dorsal scapular nerve the root value is c5 and the second is long thoracic nerve the root value is c5 c6 and c7 now there are two nerves which arise from the upper trunk so we can see here the first one is suprascapular so this is the suprascapular nerve and the root value is c5 and c6 now why the root value is c5 and c6 because upper trunk is formed by the union of c5 and c6 roots so both the nerves their root value has to be c5 and c6 the other nerve which runs more anteriorly and goes to the subclavius muscle this is known as nerve to subclavius and you can also see the root value is c5 and c6 so in total now we have seen four nerves arising two from the roots two from the trunks which trunk only the upper trunk from the upper trunk first is 
suprascapular nerve going to the scapular region another is nerve to subclavius which will be innervating subclavius muscle the middle trunk and the lower trunk and the divisions of these trunks they will not give any branches let us look at the branches from the three cords of the brachial plexus we'll start with the lateral cord so lateral cord will give rise to three branches or three nerves will be arising from lateral cord and they are you can see here the word lateral right so the two branches which will be arising from the lateral cord their name is going to begin with the word lateral so first you can see here is the lateral pectoral nerve and the second is the lateral root of median nerve median nerve as the name suggests it lies runs in the median region of the upper limb right so it will be contributed both from the lateral cord as well as from the medial cord so it has got two roots lateral root and a medial root so here the two nerves that we have already seen the first one is the lateral pectoral nerve and the second one is the lateral root of the median nerve then we have another nerve that is musculocutaneous nerve as the name suggests it is going to supply the muscles and it supplies muscles actually of the anterior compartment of the arm and then it becomes cutaneous now which cutaneous nerve it becomes lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm again remember the lateral word is coming right so we can say in total how many branches arise from the lateral cord three lateral pectoral nerve lateral root of median nerve and musculocutaneous nerve let us look at the root value now the root value will be c5 c6 and c7 why is it so because the lateral cord is formed by union of the anterior division of upper trunk upper trunk it contains fibers from c5 and c6 spinal nerve and the anterior division of middle trunk which will be containing fibers from c7 nerve so it is simple to remember the nerves which are coming from the lateral cord their root value has to be c5 c6 and c7 from the medial cord five branches arise so we can see here the branches from the medial cord on this side now again if we look at the branches from the medial cord four of these nerves their first word is medial so what are these branches first is medial pectoral nerve then we have medial root of median nerve right and then we have two cutaneous nerves medial cutaneous nerve of arm medial cutaneous nerve of forearm so these four nerves their first word is medial and then we have another important nerve arising from the medial cord that is ulnar nerve it is very easy to understand this is coming from the median nerve because this is going to run on the medial side and ulnar bone is on the medial side of the forearm so that's how you can remember so what are the five branches of medial cord they are medial pectoral nerve medial root of median nerve medial cutaneous nerve of arm medial cutaneous nerve of forearm and ulnar nerve so we have two cutaneous nerves here now their root value the medial cord is nothing but continuation of anterior division of the lower trunk and how is the lower trunk formed it is formed by the union of the ventral rami of c8 and t1 so that's why the root value of all these nerves will be c8 and t1 now you have to remember that median nerve that has contribution both from the lateral cord as well as from the medial cord so now its root value becomes c5 c6 c7 c8 and t1 all the ventral rami that they which are contributing to the brachial plexus they will be contributing to the median nerve also posterior cord again will give five branches it will become easy to remember the names of these branches if you realize that the branches which will arise from the posterior cord of the brachial plexus they will be supplying the shoulder region muscles the scapular region muscles and the muscles of the posterior compartments of upper limb 
right so now let us look at the nerves which will arise from the posterior cord they are we can see here three nerves and these are upper subscapular lower subscapular and thoracodorsal look at the names here upper subscapular it is going to the scapular region lower subscapular again going to the back and thoracodorsal the name itself suggests because this is going to supply latissimus dorsi so which aspect of the thorax the dorsal aspect and then finally we have two main nerves from the posterior cord and these are axillary nerve which supplies deltoid muscle and the radial nerve this is going to supply all the muscles of the posterior compartment of or extensor compartment of arm and extensor compartment of forearm and the dorsum of hand so all this will be supplied by radial nerve let us look at their root value now if we look at this upper subscapular and lower subscapular right first of all let us see here the posterior cord that has contribution from all the ventral rami which are forming the brachial plexus that means it contains fibers from c5 till t1 spinal nerves now the upper subscapular and the lower scap subscapular because they are in the upper part of the uh, dorsal aspect of the trunk so they will have their root value as c5 and c6 when we come to thoracodorsal nerve then the root value is c6 c7 and c8 because latissimus dorsi is in the lower, lower aspect of the trunk on the dorsal aspect next is axillary nerve this nerve supplies two muscles that is deltoid and teres minor and deltoid is in the shoulder region again in the upper part so its root value has to be c5 and c6 so from the posterior cord we have three nerves and their root value is c5 and c6 and which are these upper subscapular lower subscapular and axillary nerve the radial nerve like median nerve that will have contribution from all the spinal nerves contributing to brachial plexus that is from c5 to t1 nerves only two nerves from the brachial plexus they have contribution from all the spinal nerves which are forming brachial plexus and these are the radial nerve and the median nerve thanks for listening you can also visit my website anatomyqa.com for important questions and answers of anatomy i'll put a link of this website in the description also